we're putting closing wheels on our corn planer. Should be two inches from the center of the top here to the center of there, but down here at your closest point. The way I've found to get them to work to line up and get everything right is you are putting on what I have assumed to be the factory spacer for these. So they're two, they're about that thick. Put those on in between there and then the yetters come with all these shims. You do three on each side. It's gonna take every shim you get with the, your wheels. So three there, three there, and that space is about enough to get them to two inches. We're doing this half of the planter. Both wheels are in the front hole. The other half of the planter is gonna be one wheel in the front hole, one wheel in the back hole. It's not much, but we're gonna see if that little bit of a stagger will do anything in the field. And as I go, some of these brackets are loose up here, and I do have to center them. But for the most part, they are center already with the seed discs. So I'm gonna keep going. I've got... I got all the closing wheels on. I just wanted to mention one thing. I don't know how noticeable it is on camera, but we do have some of our Keatons that are a little bit bent. And the reason for that, most of them are on the wing. These wing units, at least the Keatons, they take a beating. Um, sometimes they'll drag a little bit, unfolding and stuff like that. It's just too high profile of a seed firmer to be on a planter like this, I think. Um, our plan is to replace all these Keatons next year. We're looking at the Rebound seed firmers. Uh, they're a lower profile seed firmer and you can still run pop-up off of them. And then... Hey guys, good morning. This morning we're going to start right off the bat with pulling the corn planter out of the shop. Uh, everything that can be done with it is done with it at the moment in its current stage in the shop. So what we are going to do is we're going to pull it out and unfold it. I have uh, hose kits for the two squeeze pumps. We're going to put new hoses in those. And then also we are going to get this row marker straightened out and gusseted up at the joint. I do have to unhook the manure spreader, so we're just gonna back it up over out of the way in the driveway and drop it.
I don't know if you noticed that this wing was kind of creep forward. I couldn't see it from the tractor until I got out and got out here and unlocked the row markers. Um, that's just something this planer's always done for some reason. This side specifically will have trouble coming all the way back into position. Now there's no locks or nothing back here. You're relying completely on hydraulic force to keep it back. But this is the row marker that's all been out of whack. These two uh i'm gonna call them ears that stick out so we're gonna pull that pin put a block under that heat that all up bend it all back into shape um up here you guys probably saw there's a lot of stuff to hook up this is a hard planter to run hydraulically there's a lot of things going on hydraulic wise you have three remotes that are being used two that are being used constantly you have this one which is the vacuum that's running in uh, running position and then you have this one over here which is a single line it runs something in this block right here uh, for the lift I'm not sure exactly what it does I just know you got to have that remote and float constantly uh, even when you're folded up it will not lift up without that remote being in float and then this one is your lift for up and down we have our ag leader harness which is right here this is going to get bolted into this hole on that i think that took about an hour and a half but i got it finally to where i could pinch the two ends together they both had different sort of twists in them and stuff like that it was just so uh such a pain to work with but i think i got them mostly straight and i got these as close as i want to get them because if i try to squeeze this closer then it I'm already making contact here. It'll take a couple times of this row marker extending and retracting to have that run smoothly. But the next step will be to run angle iron from here all the way up to about there. That's what I did on the other side, and it helped a lot. Um, I haven't hooked a tree with the other side since I've done that, so who knows? I could hook a tree and end up breaking the whole row marker off the planter next time, but that would be a new problem and hey maybe then i could get auto steer We got it welded and we got it painted up nice so we're replacing these rubber hoses inside the squeeze pump there's six i don't know if you can really see them yeah there we go there's six of them they're kind of flat they're not supposed to be that flat i think as the old ones are but they're supposed to be kind of ovally so they can uh squish because what this pump does is it kind of uses a siphon effect it squeezes down on the hose when there's liquid in it and goes around the hose and then pushes it out the other side and it just repeatedly does that all and that's what keeps the pumping motion going well these hoses are completely collapsed so what we're doing is we're replacing them so that liquid can fill up into them and it can push it around otherwise right now it's just pushing on an empty hose because the hose won't open to get the material in there sadly there is no good camera angle for this job so you guys will just have to see it when it is done here's what i'm talking about these hoses they're completely collapsed and flat instead of being up and oval like that so i think this will make a huge difference we weren't getting almost any output from these squeeze pumps and we were told to do this and i think this is going to fix our issue moment, i want to walk through this ag leader system and show you exactly what it looks like this is the seed monitoring module and so you have this harness here that ties into your factory seed sense harness and this comes around 
branches off into a few different things, plugs into three different spots, and then you have this jumper that is only used if you have an implement switch, which we don't. Implement switch is just something that goes on the wheels somewhere that tells you if the planter's up and down, which you only really need if you are controlling your drives, which we are not doing yet, so we are not, we don't have that yet. Now you have your main harness right here that comes from the front. It's one piece and then branches off into a few things. A few of them just don't get used. Uh, this plugs into a pigtail coming off that module and this plugs in down there. Now you have one port that's not being used. I taped it over because I didn't have a plug with, with, uh, with the kit that we got. Nothing's really zip tied down because this flexes a lot folding and unfolding and I want to keep this all as untensioned as possible. Um, now we're coming up here that hooks up where I showed you guys earlier up on the roof We have a globe. It's a 7500 that one is Terrastar unlocked. We are not using Terrastar That is a subscription based uh, GPS system and We were told that we were good with WAS, so we are gonna run WAS One thing now. that's different is all the act leader monitors. They're always powered straight from the battery um, the precision one used the little smiley face guy uh, plug down there, but Ag Leader doesn't do that. So we have the precision was a little bit wonky inside. There was two pieces. There was a screen, and then there was pretty much the equivalent to a computer tower behind the seat, and you had cables running back and forth from it. This is all in one in the screen. You have one harness that you can hide pretty well. Runs around. Uh, hooks up back there. There's a few pigtails that are uh, scrunched behind the seat, so they're out of sight. And then uh, this is our monitor. It's 12 inch, pretty big monitor, and we can power it up here, and I'll show you what it looks like. Looks same as a sprayer monitor. Sprayer monitor is an 8 inch. If I can get Agfinity working on the sprayer monitor, which I'm having trouble with at the moment, um, when I'm done planting, I can. We will have field boundaries all recorded. And I can upload, it will upload to the cloud. And then when I get in the sprayer, I can download from the cloud those field boundaries. So I already have GPS lines set up in every field. So there's no free, well, there's always free handing. I don't have auto steer, but there's no free handing a boundary or nothing. It's all going to be set. I just have to follow lines all the way around the field. So here is the screen. It's really hard to see, but... Um... We are not connected to Agfinity at the moment because we don't have internet in the tractor. Uh, we're going to be getting a hotspot on our phone to run that. GPS hasn't connected yet. Uh, give it a few minutes, it will. Um, but mainly we're going to be using the planting screen. And it shows everything the seed tube monitor is showing up. Uh, the serial GPS, yeah. Right when you're anywhere near the shop, GPS signal is pretty spotty. But uh, we can do that and run all that. Uh, we got product selection, so you select what hybrid you're planting, that sort of thing, and then you roll into your, this is your run screen. So we will have our population and spacing down here. You can swipe over, see singulation, spacing quality, skips, and doubles. I haven't messed around with this too much. I have a feeling I'm going to be messing around with it a lot in the field just because it's totally different than the precision. You can place pins just like in field view. This is more of like a control panel, I believe. If you're running electric meters, you could adjust population and stuff like that there. This down here is swath control. We don't have it because we don't have meters, stuff like that. So over here, we can manually turn on and off mapping. I uh, have a real hard time remembering to hit that button in the sprayer so we'll see how that goes planting anyway, i believe that really covers the ag leader monitor pretty basic it's not a hard screen to learn in any way so that is it for that i'm gonna try and get those squeeze pump hoses swapped out and i'll see you guys in a little bit well we got the new hoses in on both sides ended up being the right hoses just the old ones were stretched about three and a half inches um, that front manifold can move quite a bit and so we are able to stretch the new hoses out and get them all uh, Hose clamped into place. So this corn planter is officially a hundred percent. Well, not a hundred percent It's 99.9% .9 ready. I still have to grease it, but that'll happen 
when I pull it out. Well, actually, I'll go through and grease it right now before I put it in the barn. So, with that, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.